Man. Yo, what is up, everyone? How we doing today? It is the fifth episodes of the St. Louis Fan Hawks podcast, where I sit here with my friends Amit. What's up, guys? Chase. What's going on? Shubs. What is up? These are my best friends in the entire world, and we are doing my favorite thing in the entire world. We're sitting here drinking some beers, talking some sports, and just like friends do when they're drinking beers and talking sports, sometimes we may say some bad language. So you have been warned. All right. So uh, you can find the show on Spotify. You can find it on Apple Podcasts. You can also find it on Google Play Music. Um, you can find us on social media and on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at the St. Louis Fan Hogs podcast and Twitter and Instagram at STL underscore Fan Hogs. And we got a brand new announcement for you. This week we are rolling out our new website. You can find all of our information there. You can listen to the podcast there. You can find links to all our social media. You can find links to Google. You can find links to Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So it's real easy for you guys to get in and play it. I've been excited to get this going and we finally got it out. The website is stlfanhawks.com. Short, sweet, and simple. That's stlfanhawks.com. Check it out. You can get links to all our shows. How are we doing today, guys? doing good yeah fantastic yep um we had ourselves a little bit of a game on sunday uh not (laughs) exactly how we wanted it to end you know we came out strong though jordan jordan tayam who came out and slinging it um matt jones leading rusher in the xfl running up the gut to start that first drive we ended up getting down taylor russellino banged it into those uprights Got ourselves three points right out the bat. Cardale Jones came out on the very second pass, throws an interception to our boy Kenny Robinson, and is benched. The game was looking real good from us right out the gate. However, Tyree Jackson came in, breathed some life. I mean, he didn't really pass yeah. that much. You know, they're like, you know what, let's play like the Battle Hawks. And they started running it with their own runner. And the game kept going back and forth. You know, they got a field goal a week or they got a touchdown and then we got a field goal to answer that again. And from there, though, that was all the points we were going to score. And that's all she wrote. You know, we came out at halftime, couldn't get anything going. The defenders were swarming on us. They were stopping Matt Jones. Tayamu was sacked four times. They were all over us. So it was a tough game for sure. Yeah, but, their, their defense is very uh, bend, not break, just like ours has been over the last four weeks. They were doing some pretty interesting stuff with their defense. Yep, and they're the latest team to bench their quarterback against us. <laughs> <laughs> and that second one comes out and breathes some life. Yeah, but, it, ha- it happened again. Yep. Second straight week where that happened. Yep. Um, Dragons did that after the half. The defenders did it after the second pass. <laughs> but even across the whole XFL, you see a lot of that, though. Exactly. Which is great because they're giving the other guys a chance. Yeah. Know? Let's talk about some stats. The final score was Defenders 15, Battle Hawks 6. Jordan Te'amu 15 for 25, 174 yards. He had five rushes for or for 31 yards, no touchdowns. Matt Jones goes for thir- uh, 13 rushes for 70 yards. Christian Michael 12 for 69. Mizzou boy LaDamian Washington, five receptions on eight targets, 114 yards. Of course, Kenny Robinson on the defensive side of the ball got the interception. And linebacker Terrence Garvin, 16 total tackles, seven of them all by himself. So he was definitely running around the field. Flipping it over to the defender's side, we had Cardell Jones obviously benched after two attempts, didn't complete one. Well, he completed one to the Battle Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. <laughs> um, Tyree Jackson comes in, doesn't throw a lot, 9 for 14, 39 yards, but he got a touchdown. Um, Jarrell Presley. 15 for 107 yards rushing. A tight end, Kari Lee, 3 for 3. He was very efficient. Only 14 yards, but one of those was that t- was a touchdown from Tyree Jackson. So those are the stats. Penalty Hawks. Flag <laughs> Hawks. We are shooting. Hat. I don't really think awful. there's 
I don't think there are any. There's any foot left to shoot. <laughs> yeah, the foot's gone. <laughs> no, no more toes. I mean, it's just ridiculous. We need to clean it up. I mean, this can be a fundamentally sound team. I mean, we've seen it a couple weeks where they can go in there, they can play good, clean football and not hurt hurt themselves. This is a game that was really close. This is a game of inches, ground and pound on both sides, not a lot of passing going on. So those yards count because there's not a lot of time when it comes to games like that. The clock stays running, so there's not, you know, no time for you to readjust and all that so any little crucial mistake for any amount of yards could be the deciding factor as we saw absolutely yeah and we so i think we got into defenders territory once really deep and just couldn't get any points out of it and penalties were one of the reasons why we couldn't get things going like with momentum or anything exactly and both sides had a missed field goal except ours was critical because it got us in a position to where we couldn't win Whereas the defenders were able to overcome it and continue to score and get what do what they needed to do to get it done. All in all, it was a tough game, but our team, I mean, they, they played good. Our team usually averages about like 23 to 25 points a game. This time we only had six. Uh, the only other loss we had was against the Roughnecks, and that was another game that was pretty close, and external forces prevented us from winning, but... We may set a trend here. You know, we go a couple of games, we win, and then we may lose one here and we come back strong. I'm hoping. Yep. So hopefully we can get it, everything together. Uh, one of the things I didn't like to see was that block punt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, and then Marquette ended up getting hurt. I mean, I mean, he essentially went straight into the guy's shit. No. Right, right. Now, you know, at first everyone got up and screamed roughing the kicker, but – I don't know. That was a pretty clean hit. Yeah, they got clean. the ball first. Clean, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, Marquette King looked to be hurt. Um, it's probably his kicking leg with the way that he was ran into. It looks like that's what he was grabbing whenever he went down. He grabbed it as soon as he hit the ground. Yeah, too. so yeah. hopefully hopefully he's okay. And we did have some roster moves earlier. We did sign another punter to the team just in case Marquette can't go. So um, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he can get back into kicking shape. We don't want him to miss any time so that – yeah, best punter in the league, uh, best punter in both leagues. Mm -hmm. Never want to see that happen. Um, the rest of the league, we had the Guardians at the Renegades. That score was the Guardians 30, Renegades 12. Tampa Bay played the L.A. Wildcats. Uh, Tampa Bay scored 34. How Wildcats about those Vipers? 41. So thank you, Vipers, for doing <laughs> what you do. Uh, we had the Seattle Dragons against the Houston Roughnecks. Of course, the Roughnecks won <laughs> to go to 5-0. and We're talking about that one. <laughs> and Dragons scored 23 points on the day. Uh, there's a three-way tie in the East. Uh, the East is the division of the Battle Hawks. We were number one coming into this week. After this win, or after this win by the Defenders, they are number one in the league. We're number two. Guardians are number three, all at – three and two on the year it's tight and then we got our buddies the vipers at one and four on the <laughs> bottom of the league that's exactly they're where they hanging need to out be. playing that's football what they need to <laughs> say. Yeah. Um, on the west we got the roughnecks number one five and oh we got the renegades uh two and three we got the wildcats two and three and then we got the dragons one and four so they're chilling with the vipers yep, that's exactly what's yep. going on around the league there um you know, there weren't as many shenanigans uh, from the Battle Hogs set this time around, but I'd say that's just because we were away. Yeah. Um, the, there was, there's been a lot of hype. We went out to the – or I went out to the post to watch the game. Uh, there, was a, there was an okay crowd. I was really hoping there would be more people there. So coronavirus scare everyone's at home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but it was it was really fun hanging out there. Had a couple beers, had some, had some wings. I got some pretty good wings. Watch a game on the big screen. And it started out fun. But as time went on, it yeah. started becoming that fun <laughs> rather Very quickly. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I don't know, man. This this it was just tough because the fans are so absolutely excited, and everyone is just having a good time. I mean, I, you can't win every game. Yeah, three and two is not yeah, a bad record. Yeah, yeah, no. This is not I mean, a. Bad it wasn't record. a bad game either. Yeah, well, I, th I think the hardest part about it is there in the fourth quarter we had two very strong opportunities to dig ourselves yep. out of the hole yep. that we've got ourselves in mm -hmm. and both times managed to screw it up. I think that's the hardest part to see yeah. is when you come close enough to be able to get out of the hole and you just can't. Exactly. And, and it's not like we weren't making plays. I mean, we had a receiver, LaDamian Washington, go for 114 yards. One of those was an 
excellent, excellent catch on the sideline. Oh, yeah. That yeah, was, was great awareness. That's an NFL catch. Exactly. Like, yeah, better than went NFL. up. He yeah. got it yeah. in a critical moment where we absolutely absolutely needed to get up the field. Jordan Tam drops back and launches it. And he jumps up, you know, kind of turns, pivots back a little to get the defender to miss, jumps up, grabs it, stays in bounds. Insane concentration and a high pressure, mm -hmm. high pressure situation Absolutely. like that. The receivers are really nice with that, though. They're keeping their awareness nice and staying in bounds. Exactly. Trying to get the first downs. So it's not like we, we, we don't have playmakers. It's not like we don't have big playability. That was something that was a question earlier in the year. But it looks like they are able to pull one out of the hat every now and then. I really do think it's like the penalties. And then, honestly, the defenders just had a really good plan. The offensive line could have played a little better. Mm -hmm. um, they were letting pressure through all game. If Tayama wasn't sacked, he was running for his life. Yeah. So, uh, to clean up some of offensive line, clean up the penalties, and I think we'll be back on track next week. Yeah, run game sure. was strong. Uh, defense was really good, too. Who are we playing next week? Are we playing? I think we're playing the Vipers next week, right? I, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. we're going to Florida. Yeah, we're going to Tampa Florida, Bay Florida. to play the Vipers, a game that we've been waiting for. <laughs> of course, there's another one later in the year in St. Louis, so we'll be able to see that. But all them Viper fans, hey, don't worry, guys. There's not going to be any lines in the bathroom. <laughs> Vipers fans poop standing up, right? So <laughs> they poop don't That's why it. we're selling out of toilet paper so fast. Uh, oh. Here we go. Oh. Welcome to the conspiracy. Everyone corner. wants to say it's the coronavirus. It's no. It's just Viper fans poop standing yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. You figure we'd have an abundance Why of paper <laughs> yeah. toilet Just, paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, shit messy if you think about. It. Yeah, so, it does. I, mean, I don't know. More clean up, I sit down, so I, w I wouldn't be able yeah, to tell I, you. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> when you pee or when you shit. <laughs> Oh, for Raj, it's both. No. <laughs> How do you know? You've been looking? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But, that yeah, no, rough. I'm I'm still I'm still excited. I'm I'm still proud. I, I'm still hopeful. I still think we're going to go to the championship to get revenge Absolutely. against the Houston Roughnecks. Yeah, and they allowed 41 <laughs> points this week. The Vipers didn't, and so let's, yeah, uh, let's score it. more. Yeah, like, where's the defenders of last week? Shit, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the team has scored none, right? <laughs> exactly. Once again, you can find us on Facebook at the St. Louis Battlehawks. Oh, my God. Don't find us at the St. Louis Battlehawks. Find us at the St. Louis <laughs> Fanhawks podcast. That's we are right. not the St. Louis Battlehawks podcast. We are the St. Louis Fanhawks <laughs> podcast. And then you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at STL underscore Fanhawks. Of course, I want to remind you about our new website, stlfanhawks.com you can find links to everything there it's really easy um get on there listen to the podcast get on the social medias post your questions thoughts and topics that you would like to be discussed we would definitely love to interact with you guys the bigger crowd we can get the more people we can interact with the more goofiness that can be on this show with that being said let's talk about some of the stuff that's been going on uh, i want to start with marquette king Marquette King, outside of the NFL, is still building a name for himself. He's got himself a nice little Spotify page with a bunch of songs. He's got a couple of singles. He's got an album out. Really? Yeah, I heard about it after last week's game, so I decided to hop on there and check it out. And, you know, it's it's not anything I turn on, like, on my daily drive or anything, but if I'm, if I'm out partying having a good time, it might be something I'd be okay with having on. It's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised by it. And it's, it's real EDM-y. Um, the way I saw it described on the internets was pop hop. I was like, okay, pop. here we go. There's new, always we got a new genre. Around. Yeah, new genres <laughs> coming around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's making quite a name for himself on there. Yeah, I mean, he's got what twelve thousand listeners on his Spotify page. Yep. Well, I wish we had twelve thousand listeners I on know, our podcast right? <laughs> page. <laughs> Um, overall, the music's pretty good. I listened to all the singles, the top five ones that are listed on Spotify. Uh, they're pretty good. I'm gonna play a little snippet of one maybe here. Uh let's let's see what's going on on my phone. Are we working up for another lawsuit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, dude, it's gonna be a shout out. A copyright uh Uh, 
So you get the vibes. Yeah, beat's not bad. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. chill. It's laid yeah. back, and then it gets hype in some parts. Yeah. Typical EDM stuff you hear. Yep. But yeah, yeah um, overall, I quite enjoy it. It's not bad. It's a good listen. Check it out, guys. It's cool um, that he's doing other stuff too. Yeah, show yeah. some support to St. Louis's punter, the best punter in the XFL, he also the best has a punter in the NFL. YouTube channel too. He's got a YouTube channel yeah. too. Yeah. Nice old boys putting in work yeah. outside of the league. Yeah, he's got quite a personality. Make a brand Love for to see himself. It. Yeah. Uh, we can relate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, like we were saying earlier, that coronavirus, dude. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I just got a text that said Mizzou's classes are canceled, or they're going to be online for the rest of the semester. Wow, wow. so college campuses are shutting down. Yeah. I think the National World Health Organization earlier um, rated it a pandemic. Yep, they declared it. They did. I was like, dang. And this between 2019 and the first couple of months of 2020, <laughs> it's been crazy. Yeah, yep. we, can, we can go back to 2019. I'm cool with that. I was gonna say like, what? All right, so January we had the threat of World War Three. February we had a plague, and March watch stock market crash. I'm calling it if it hasn't already. Yep, because of the coronavirus. That's- that's an opportunity right there. Dude, this, I saw the Snapchat or a video online on Twitter. Uh, this chick was on, like, an Airbus. You know, it's the big-ass airplane mm-hmm. that has, like, the double three, A380. The three, yeah, yeah, the yeah. big one. And she was the only one on the plane. Uh, yeah, I saw wow. a news article of that, how they're flying without um, any without passengers. Any, yeah. yeah, It is wild just seeing a video of an empty plane. Like, literally nobody is traveling. And, and you know, whenever you're just going in your day-to-day life, just going to work and back, you, you don't kind of – you don't think about that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, you just – Oh look, there's another plane in the sky. That's it. You know, that plane's empty now, and nobody's moving. Airliners. That's, cr- are- that's crazy. When I was taking Eddie out for a walk, I saw like four planes, but didn't even think that they're yeah. probably mostly empty. Oh yeah, we have another guest on this show today. Oh, we do. He doesn't speak. He doesn't speak. <laughs> He's got four legs He's and furry. a tail that moves <laughs> 500 miles an hour. That's Eddie, the official Fan Hawk Podcast doggy. Yep. You guys can see him on our social media. I'll post a little picture of him so you can see him. He's got a little Cardinals bandana on right now. He's showing his support for the St. Louis Cardinals. I think he's sleeping right now. Yeah, he's got, he is asleep. He's big cocooned. Yep. One of his favorite <laughs> pastimes. We don't need to worry about it. Eddie would be happy if uh, if anybody got coronavirus because then he'd get to stay home with them. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this post on the Reddit that said the the – the ones who are benefiting majorly from the coronavirus are all dogs because that means people <laughs> because people get to stay at home. <laughs> but no, the reason I brought up the coronavirus here is because I saw another article that said that there was a vendor and that the Seattle Dragon Stadium, yeah, CenturyLink, yeah, uh, that was tested positive for the coronavirus. And I think that article came out right after we played them in Seattle. In Seattle, yeah, yeah. So they're bringing the Coroni back. <laughs> do you think they'll do the thing where they don't have fans in the – like shut down the stadium? Maybe. I know they're doing that widespread across Europe right now. Um, NCAA. I know there have been reports of teams in the United States making a plan to play behind closed doors yeah. if it does come to yeah, that. Yeah, NBA games will be without fans probably. Dude, imagine the players, though. They go from playing in the biggest league to – no fans. <laughs> Just imagine playing that. Like it's gonna be like practice. It's oh, gonna yeah. be less than practice. <laughs> like, I mean, what do you think on the TV broadcast? You think they pump in fan noise, like fake fan noise? <laughs> with the seats I, oh, it would look quiet. weird. It's look gonna weird. be weird. It's gonna be like watching golf. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe you'll be able to hear the players pretty well. You'll be able to hear them really well. Yeah. That that guy on the who mutes it is gonna be muting it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, see. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yes. Now, you know, the coronavirus is spreading, you know, everyone's saying to be safe, clean your germs, you know, wash your hands, don't clean share your anything. Germs. Meanwhile, everyone in uh, D.C. is taking their beer cups after drinking <laughs> them, stacking them up, and like hundreds of people are holding on to this thing while it snakes up to the top of the stadium. So those guys are crazy. They have made a name for themselves in the fandom of the XFL. The oh, yeah. beer snake <laughs> is a thing. Many are trying to replicate it, but no one will ever be able to duplicate it, in my opinion. How big was their beer snake? It was, it was pretty big. Insane. Yeah. Quite I've a few seen, decks. Up. I've seen some in like college football games. Yeah. But uh yeah. No, the battle or the few defenders did it crazy. against the Battle Hawks. Yeah. Uh the Battle Hawks fans are all over the Facebooks and all over the Twitters and all over the Instagrams saying 
we should have our own beer snake. And there is a raging wild debate between two major factions, those who think we should do it and those who think we shouldn't. Now, you know, I can understand this is something that's popular. A lot of our society today does a lot of viral things. It's, it's a trend. One person comes out and does something and it explodes mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it becomes the blank, blank challenge. Yep. And then <laughs> everybody gets on TikTok. Everybody gets on. <laughs> when Vine was around, everybody got on Vine. Everybody gets on Facebook Live, YouTube, whatever, and they upload videos of themselves doing the same thing. Uh, I guess there's people out there that want to start the beer snake challenge, right? And so who can get the longest beer snake? Mm -hmm. You know, we actually do have an advantage. Now, that advantage, I think, is a thing that should be our thing and that we don't have to worry about doing no beer snakes or anything like that. And the fact is we're opening up the top part of the dome. Exactly. We are going to have an NFL-sized crowd at an XFL game. That is our thing. We don't need beer snakes. We don't need uh, all these other fads and things. We got guys that are tailgates burning their crotches off. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, what what else do we need? Yeah, let's just sell us ourselves on the fact that we are the most popular XFL team. We are the biggest fan base, you know, and we don't need a thing. We are a thing. We, exactly. We, we are the thing. Um you talk about uh, the rest of the nine F- XFL teams out there. They're used to playing between twenty and 30,000 people. I mean, you got the former NFL guys that are used to playing against a big crowd, but there's a lot of young guys out there that this is the most amount of people they've ever played in front of, right? Mm-hmm. Then they go to the Battle Hawks game. Then the Dome, 60,000, 70,000 people in there, packed loud because the city loves this team. And they're putting a good product on the field. Yeah, we got opposing players shouting us out. Exactly, Stan Kroenke. <laughs> always got to take notes, buddy. Team, but, yeah. Did you Thanks. see that new logo they put out? Oh my god, it <laughs> was <laughs> horrible. Dude, the first post I saw is this looks more like a Chargers logo. <laughs> <laughs> it, did, it did though. It did. My God, I thought it was actually when I first saw it. I was yeah, like, okay, yeah. Chargers playing in this. Yeah, I know the Chargers in LA now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know that that logo is ridiculous. So he's he's sitting on his mountains of money out out in LA, disconnected from the entire world, disconnected from what it means to be a sports fan. Yep. He's thinking he's thinking he knows what's going on. He's like a new uh, logo. They'll right. do it. <laughs> he he owns the Nuggets, right? His uh, I think his son does. Yeah. Okay, officially. and then he also has a hand in the Avalanche. And our, the soccer team, Arsenal. Arsenal as yeah. well. I think game. Arsenal recently, a couple months back, came out and were booing Kroenke. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's not a very popular guy. Yeah. He shouldn't be. Definitely. Fucking Kroenke. <laughs> Bastard. But it's okay. You know why? Because we have the Battle Hawks. We and do. W- they open the top part of the dome, and we're going to be 65, 70,000 strong, showing our support to the team that gave us a chance. Born and raised in St. Louis. Exactly. We've been fans since day one. That's kind of cool. Like, could you imagine being a like a Chiefs fan from day one or a Packers fan know, from day yeah. one? Like, you know, anything crazy that happens, will be. We, we can say we were there for it. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, first XFL championship game. Hopefully, That's right? Fingers yeah. crossed. It's yeah. about that time to start thinking about the playoffs. Yeah. We're about, uh, you know we're five weeks in. That's half the season. So. How it shakes how it shakes down is that the top two teams in each division will play each other, and whoever wins will go then go to the championship. So if the playoffs started right now, uh, let me go back to the standings. Yeah, we would be here. in it. We'd be playing we'd, the uh, yeah. We'd be playing the defenders. Again. Yeah, defenders, we'd yeah. play the defenders, and the Roughnecks would play the Renegades. If it ended today, so the winner of those will go then go down to Houston to play the championship game. I think there's a controversy brewing. Speaking of Houston. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think uh, those of you who have followed the show since episode one or two know that we believe that there's a full-blown controversy going on with the XFL refs. We think the XFL wants Houston to play the first championship game in Houston against whatever team, which most likely is going to be the Battle Hawks. I'm, I'm booking it right now. Uh, we had another situation. At the end bum, of bum, the game. Bum. <laughs> we had another similar situation at the end of the Seattle Dragons game. We had a one PJ Walker, widely touted as the best quarterback in the entire XFL. Late in the game, down at the two yard, I want to say it was at the two yard line. 
some something like in deep into their territory. Right, right. No, he takes the snap. He goes up to the side. He jumps in, and refs call it a touchdown. There was a few minute, a few seconds left in the game. It was fourth down. If they didn't get that touchdown, the Seattle Dragons would have had a chance to score. I mean, yeah, it probably was highly unlikely that they were going to get to score, but it gave them a chance. And in the XFL, like in the NFL, if you go up by nine games over, it's a two score game. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got two seconds, three seconds, whatever left in the game, you're not coming back. It's it's actually impossible. In the XFL, however, a nine point swing can happen on one scoring play because you can get a touchdown for six points and then you can do the three pointer. So you can definitely get nine points in one score. So it's still a one score game. Theoretically, Seattle does have a chance to tie it back up. Nope. They call the touchdown. Replay very clearly showed that PJ Walker's knee was down. It was down at the one yard line before the ball crossed the plane. So that was not a touchdown. They call it a touchdown. Anyway, game was over. Yeah, XFL apologized again. Yeah, they made Immediately a after. <laughs> yep. And that was the crazy part. That was the next next point I was gonna make is whenever the whenever the Roughnecks had that offsides call uh, that offsides non call against the Battle Hawks, you know, it took a couple of days for them to come out and be like, Yeah, we messed up. This game, they came out immediately and were like, Oh yeah, the, that person has been removed, uh that reassigned or whatever. Means fired. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can pull up the actual quote. I have it right here. Um, you would think that with the insight that we have now with being able to watch the reviews, that it would kind of help prevent things like this because everybody's watching. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of shocked to see this kind of stuff still happening. Granted, yeah. I still don't think it's as bad as the NFL, but it's still kind of shocking to see how it and Especially because that was a big thing they played on, like all the plays are reviewed. You can see everything. Right, yeah. I just think, yeah, things like this that they don't consider reviewable doesn't make any sense. Like, these are game-changing kind of plays. You need to yeah. be able to review them. All right, I got a quote right here. It said, Saturday's Seattle Dragons-Houston Rough- Roughnecks game should not have ended as it did. Replays showed clearly that the knee of Houston quarterback P.J. Walker touched the field, rendering him down, and the fourth down play officially completed with approximately two seconds remaining on the clock, effectively turning the ball over to the Seattle on downs. With a nine-point differential in the score, Seattle was denied an opportunity to tie the game. The XFL sincerely regrets this error. In addition, Wes Booker, who served as officiating supervisor for Saturday's game, has been reassigned. That was the official statement that was put out by the XFL immediately after the Houston Roughnecks game. So... Maybe it's not a controversy, but we're going to call it a controversy anyway. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. It yeah. happened. Everything's yeah. rigged. Look, nobody, nobody <laughs> you know, they thought FIFA was clean. Nope. Oh, no, NBA no. had uh, NBA had refs shaving points for, you know, everything's rigged. And I think it would be really good for ratings if Houston played in Houston for the first. So, yeah. yeah that's controversy. They've won yeah. two games thanks to controversy but you know what at the end of the day regardless of controversies and theories and conspiracies and everything like that the roughnecks still have to play someone in that championship game and that someone is going to be the st louis battle hawks and we will have our revenge that's right revenge Tehamu hawks will outclass pj walker again because we destroyed them in the stats last time oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. we we won that game on paper. Of course, that's not how it works in real life. But yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the greatest player, the greatest name in all of sports history, who I'm proud to say is a part of the St. Louis Battlehawks. <laughs> the St. Louis Battlehawks released uh, a post talking about some players that have been acquired in the latest uh, yeah. roster expansion yeah. that I just happened. I think most happened. of them are from Team 9, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. There's a one uh, player, a one who used to play in the NFL. He's played for Buffalo. He's also played for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. He is now playing in the XFL. He's an Arizona grad. Yep, graduated in Arizona. He's a tackle, offensive tackle, with the most epic name ever. Gerhard DeBeer. Now, you know how much we like beer on this podcast. <laughs> All right. Now, we, we, we have literally an opportunity to buy a Battle Hawks jersey that says De Beer on That's it. That's right. I'm yep. going to buy 12. <laughs> <laughs> 
but that's I'm, an amazing name. Yeah, I, know. I even awesome. got on. I even commented on the post. I was like, please let Gerhard de Beer wear number sixty nine. <laughs> How great would there would it be for a legitimate jersey that says De Beer and it's number sixty nine? <laughs> be sold out immediately. Seconds. I mean, I don't, I don't care what has to happen. Hey, you, if uh, Shubs, I think you said that there is a player who wears number sixty nine yeah. already on the Battle Hawks, right? I don't care what you have to do, Mister De Beer. You get next to him. You guys go on a foot race. You give him a thousand dollars. You, I don't know, chug twelve beers in a row. <laughs> Your or last seltzer, Bud Light seltzer. Yeah. Uh, do <laughs> something, sponsor. but get that number. Trade that number. Do rock, paper, scissors, you know, do a push-up contest. But you need to get that number. You need to you need to have a jersey that says De Beer with number 69 on it. Right out of college, too. Yep. And you may ask, where does someone get a name like Gerhard De Beer? He's from South Africa. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's pretty crazy. I was expecting German. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, he's down there from South Africa, and... He, he I, I watched a little interview on him or interview with him um, back when he was with Buffalo, <laughs> and he said when he started he was he was like six eight six nine two hundred and forty pounds and they wanted him to be offensive lineman so now or at that time during the interview he was three hundred and twenty pounds. Wow. He said he had to eat eight thousand calories a day. No 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 Jesus. no. Never, My God. Never. <laughs> and he's like it's crazy you know the. The one of my only problems I have is I have to worry about eating too many calories. <laughs> I have to eat too much food. Where I come from, it's not like that. <laughs> so you know, it was, it was interesting to see. Um, but I'm very excited to have this guy on the team. The, the other players we signed: uh, Corin Kirvin. I played in Alabama. He's a guard. Tight end Gabe Holmes from Purdue. We had Davon Grayson from East Carolina, and Corey Carter, punter from Texas Southern. Um, I believe Corey Carter will be the next man up if. Uh, yeah, Marquette can't play. Absolutely. So we'll see how that goes. Let's talk about uh, the rest of the state. What's going on with the Cardinals? Yeah, so uh, a weird thing kind of happened. Uh, Yairo, Hyro, I don't know, like Hyro, yeah, they, Yairo, they, they, Munoz. Gyro. That dude was like, peace. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was like, you know what? I'm done with this shit. I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was crazy. I mean, he was like, he hurt his hamstring or something like that, and he was supposed to have a physical done. He straight up left the team yeah. and got on a plane and went back to the Dominican Republic. He yeah. probably got a cheap flight. Something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> it took me a second to get it. I, was I, had, a, I had a little lag. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he didn't catch a coronavirus. Uh, he went back to the Dominican Republic. I want to say he's with family, but the way the Cardinals found out, he didn't tell the manager, he didn't tell any of his uh, his buddies on the team or anything like that. Like th- one of the players found out via text the next day mm. that he had left. I mean, Do you just think that baffling. maybe he told them, but they didn't hear it because he only speaks Spanish? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's other people who speak Spanish on the Cardinals, though. Yeah, well, we got Yachty. Mol- oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Mosellac. Where did he come out from? I want to say it was Mosellac or someone Someone in the league came out and they were like, you know, he wasn't really too happy with the game plan last year and he wanted to be out there more and then he was showing signs of not being happy with the game plan and mm-hmm. how much usage he was going to get this year. And they came out with like, we were going to give him more. It's, it's a you know a process, right. but he wasn't, he wasn't liking what he was seeing with the game plan and they believe that this might have something to do with that. So... Who knows? I mean, we've cut him. We've released him. He's no longer on the team. Who know? Uh, if you're another team looking at him, I don't know. You know, it's kind of that kind of looks bad in my it opinion. Does, yeah. I mean, he's a good player. I enjoy watching him play. Um, he's very skilled, but you can't just up and leave your team Especially without when you telling got a Nice anyone. setup over in St. Louis or not? Exactly. Baseball heaven. Mm-hmm. I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, any MLB team though, just to up and leave professional league. Doesn't look good. Exactly. Like, I mean, there's plenty of people. Okay, I understand. This is one of the things that is happening right now across the NFL and you know, just across all of sports. I understand that you're providing a product for an organization that is making sometimes billions of dollars, right? But you also got to understand that there are hundreds of thousands of people who would literally do anything 
to have to be in that position. There's also a hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of people who did do anything, and for some reason, injury or personal or whatever happens, they're not able to be in that position. And for you to just up and leave because you're not happy with the game plan, um, that kind of that kind of chaps my ass a little. I'll mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah. I mean, you have the opportunity of a lifetime, something that you're uh, that could that's never going to happen to it's millions pretty much a and dream for everyone. People. Exactly, yeah. it's like winning the lottery. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you put in. I'm not trying to discount anyone who's put in the work. I'm, no, I'm no, talking no. for yeah. the people who put in the work. Yeah. You know, um, it's just a shame. It's just a shame to see, especially with this organization like the Cardinals that prides itself on team and you know being together and everything like that i mean it's a good it's a really good vibe with that with those guys and for someone to just leave like that it's very odd and as being a cardinals fan you don't see that very often you don't see players who want to leave you normally see players who want to come play for this franchise yeah for sure yeah yeah also um yeah unrelated to this but espn released a list of the top 100 mlb players uh we got three players on there really? nice uh, really? so, yeah 92 at paul de young which i thought was really interesting he could have been a lot higher on this list if he played like he did in the first half of the season last year yeah um, and i really wish he would pronounce his name like it was spelled <laughs> i'd call him de jong <laughs> yeah he's Goldie. a yeah, he's a really good defender um but i don't like and he has really good power but he has declined offensively like if you look at his just his batting average over the last three seasons, I'm hoping... That's the coach. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's ripping into him. Yeah. I'm hoping he can kind of turn it around this year. He played a lot last year, and he was. T- I think he was tired. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully we'll get him some more rest this season. It's cool to see Goldie in at 64 in yeah. his first season as a Cardinal. Yeah, and he. I think he also is one of those guys who could be higher than this. Um, it, he did. He had a decent season last year, I think a decent batting average, but I think uh, his first... Maybe it's because it was his first season with a new team. Um, yeah, getting maybe, acclimated. Getting acclimated to it all. I think he really loves the city, though, and he signed that big contract yep. last year. And yeah, of course, the whole city's excited for that, yeah. having a having a stud guy back on first base. Yep. Something that we've missed, you know, since Albert Pujols. Yeah, that we tried guy. Matt Carpenter out there for a little bit. He did okay, but he's really a third baseman. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Flaherty, the yep. new ace. We got, our, just, we got our horse up there, 22. He's, yep, he's essentially the ace. I know that there's been some other teams out there trying to grab him, but we're not going to put him in a trade. Oh, no way. No way. Uh, when do no you trade way. for a team's ace, right? Exactly. He's like 25 years old. Yep. Like he's, could be good. Killer, yeah. I still miss Shelby Miller. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't really do much after he left the Cardinals, so we got rid of him at the right time, but he was always fun to watch. He was. What's going on with the Blues, Chase? Um, doing pretty good right now. Uh, we're eight and two in our last ten, um, which is really shocking. Yeah, I, I feel like it's always like this across all sports. It's a good time and, to be doing it. Well, yeah, but it, it's crazy across all sports. You have fantastic teams that beat fantastic teams, but the second they go up against a mediocre team, they lose. <laughs> oh, I know I know that. Ch- Chiefs used to do that a lot. Um, Battlehawks. Was that a Chiefs? <laughs> yeah, 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 for real. <laughs> Battlehawks, too. So, yeah, we've, we've had that a few times uh, so far, but so we're doing really well. Um, Pareko is really stepping up, which I love to see. Our, our defense is generating more. Most of the scoring opportunities are more of the goals. Lately, it's later in the season, which I mean is good that you can you can have that balance. But I mean, the forwards got to generate shit too. So exactly, and he might be playing good because his wallet's a little lighter, isn't it? <laughs> or no, was that Sunquist? Uh, that was Sunquist. Sunquist, he got he got a penalty. I think it was five grand for elbowing. Um, and it, it's really strange. I like Sunquist, and I think he plays a great game of hockey. He always seems to get the bad luck fines like that i think this is the third year in a row he's gotten a fine wow hard hitter dude so but I, hey i mean he plays a great game and he does really well with uh barbashev on the line so you know i think five thousand dollars is a nice it's pretty okay to lay out a, a shit hawk no i'm just <laughs> kidding <laughs> no you don't you don't ever want to go ahead hunting we don't we don't need a bounty gate in, nope. well, in I mean, the nhl <laughs> you also gotta realize five minutes later in the game 
done knock the guy's head off. So that was a that was a fantastic fight. Right. I don't know if you guys and, see the highlights and, of that. And he didn't he didn't get charged, right? He didn't get fined. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> love I love that. that yep. That's what I love about Danny Joe. <laughs> Dude, uh, St. Louis is getting ready to be super lit because Battle Hawks. Everyone's already excited about the Battle Hawks, and then the Blues are about to be in the playoffs again. We want to see a repeat of last year. We had a lot of fun last year going out. Going downtown, going to the ballpark village to watch games. Me and Amit actually went to a playoff game. Yeah, yep. that was really fun. Uh, we had some pretty good seats. So hopefully we can get another one of those years because the party is excellent. And here on the Fan Hawks podcast and in each of our lives, the party never stops. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> um, what else is going on here? I see we've got a deal with Springfield. Yes, so the the contract with our AHL affiliate uh, expired, and we recently signed a new one with the Springfield, Massachusetts, key being in Massachusetts, uh, the Springfield Thunderbirds. Um, and I'll be honest, I know nothing about this team, but that's, that's something that I kind of want to touch on and see what you guys thought. Should the AHL affiliate teams, should they be located closer to their NHL team, you think? I think so. I think some form of it should. Um, I don't know how it works specifically and fully in the NHL, but I know in the MLB we've got the Springfield Cardinals just, you know, down 44. I know we've got Memphis also, but, I mean, I'd I'd go ahead and say that the Springfield double-A team being down there, the Springfield Cardinals, I think it makes up for that. So a lot of the deeper – a lot of the hardcore fans can go see the Mm up-and-coming guys that are working out. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. I think it'd be cool to have the affiliate team for the blues being close to us so that some of the diehard fans here can go out and see some of the prospects that are coming up. Is this team replacing Peoria? Um, so Peoria has been done away for quite some time. Oh, uh, that was a, I think that was a few years ago. Hmm. Um, so but yeah, I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know much about this new team. I'd be curious to see. Uh, uh, plays out. The thing that that I think about is, you know, for the players, you know, the Blues have called up and sent back down multiple players multiple times throughout the season. That's got to be hard for a for a player traveling, you know, especially right. across the time zone or two. Oh yeah, I didn't think uh, about that. Yeah, anytime I go on a trip, even just like a drive to Springfield and where my family is, in three and a half hours or so, I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm not doing anything <laughs> else. These guys are going and playing NHL games. Right, and I think it would help even for players to build a relationship with the city that they're in. That too, uh, yeah. Get in with the fans, make a name for themselves, so when they do get called up, you know. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. What do I you would think? say the biggest piece right now, um, Troy Brower was placed on waivers. Oh, And a lot of people are thinking that that's hinting at Tarasenko coming back next week. Oh, we're about to be at full strain. That would be amazing. And Maximum the- power. The best part is that Tarasenko is going to be well rested going into this playoff run. He might just start going off hat trick after hat trick after hat trick. So I'm we can only hope. I mean, it could go either way. He could be he could be pretty rusty and yeah, start out kind of slow, or he could come out swinging for the fences. Yeah, I mean, he's got some time to make up. He's you know he's got he's got a season's worth of stats to fit. In. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm excited for that. Obviously, I. There's very few moments in people's lives where they remember exactly when they were when something happened. Now, this one I'm about to say is going to surprise someone, especially Chase. Because everyone's going to say, oh, I knew exactly where I was when the Blues won the Stanley Cup. Or I knew exactly when I was when we found out we're going to the Stanley Cup. I remember exactly where I was when Chase told me Tarasenko is going to be the best player of the Blues. Because I was like... We were walking. We were in high school still. I think this was, what, 20 – it had to be like 2011, 2012, right? Yeah, I think it was – I think it was our juniors. Yeah, junior we were – maybe? Me and, you, junior me and you were walking by the gym going to shop class. And you told me – or I think we were leaving from shop class. And you told me that this guy Tarasenko who came in from the Russian League is going to be the best player on the Blues. And he is the face of the Blues, essentially, I would say. Uh, it's pretty crazy. You nailed that one right on the head, buddy. Yeah, I remember watching. I, I remember when we drafted him, um, and I watched some of his some of his highlights from the Russian leagues, and I was just blown away. And I loved the way that he played. And um, 
I don't know. I, I think a lot of it was probably high hopes. I probably got a lucky guess, but I, I do remember that it's it's nice to see him come as far as he has. Exactly. Yeah, it's really cool to see. But hopefully, hopefully the Blues can keep up this good streak they've got going on, and we can get into the playoffs and dominate everyone just like we did last year for trophy number two. We need that parade number two, and then the Cardinals can you know, do some work and improve on last year, get to the World Series, and then Chiefs can win another Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and then we've got the best. Yeah. yeah. Fuck you, Boston. <laughs> it's our turn. <laughs> We're going to have the best hockey team, the best NFL team, and the best baseball team. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, speaking of the Chiefs, they are, you know, we're kind of in a little bit of a dead zone. The The staff, the front office, they're working diligently, looking at players, to draft and building profiles on them and doing their research. The players, the Chiefs players, are still in the offseason. Patrick, I almost called him Patrick McAfee. (laughs) I can't believe I just did that. (laughs) Patrick Mahomes was recently on HBO's show, The Shop, at a barber shop, talking about some of the things that um, he was, some of his thoughts as he came up through college and the NFL and everything like that. And one of the most interesting things I heard was that he said he didn't learn how to read defenses till last season. Really? Halfway through last season, he said he didn't. What now? This man used to play safety, and he switched to quarterback his junior year of high school. Played all the way through college, got that insane 50 touchdown season, and said he didn't know how to read defenses until halfway through last season. Wow. He is not even in his prime, and he's already a league MVP. He's already thrown for 50 touchdowns, which only Tom Brady and Peyton Manning have ever done. And he's a Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl champion already, and it's only his third season yeah, in the he's NFL. He's not even 25, right? Yeah, exactly. He's going to be 25 in September. Like this, And he's not even at his peak. Yeah. He's still got Andy Reid, the greatest offensive-minded coach right now and maybe ever in the history of the NFL when everything's said and done. Um, and, he, like, when they said what he wants to do, he said he wants to get on Andy Reid's level when it comes to play calling. Could you imagine if – like, just think about this, like, five, to, five, seven years from now when he's had that experience, he's a veteran – He's had five to seven years of experience working with Andy Reid. They're they're probably already thinking on the same level, but Patrick Mahomes gets a more uh, a deeper understanding of how everything goes on, how Andy plans for each scenario, and the two of them can work together. And I mean, they already call like two or three plays each play, and he goes out there and he sees what the defense is doing, and he picks one out of the three. He's going to continue to do better the more he learns how to read these defenses. I mean, he's going to be unstoppable. And, you know, you're going to have Tyreek Hill who can run deep. You're always going to have those great players around him that are making him good too. But at the same time, Patrick Mahomes is the kind of player who could take somebody off the street and make them into a superstar. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll see We'll see how that goes. We've got the draft coming in. Once the draft happens, we'll see which players Patrick Mahomes is going to make a superstar. Um, there's a bunch of, bunch of holes to fill, particularly on the defense side, the big question mark being Chris Jones. If Chris Jones, we franchise tagged him. Um, if we're not able to get to uh, get a deal done, the best thing to do may be to trade him as much as it hurts me to say that, because that man is the Patrick Mahomes of defense on yeah. our side of the ball. So I hope we find a way to keep him. Um, nothing's going to be clear until all this CBA stuff's done and in, in, in place. There's a lot of disparity between the two sides when it comes to the NFL CBA. Some of the players are okay with it. They just want to play football and get on with it. Some of the players are very, very vocal about not liking it. Yeah, have you seen the have you seen the new owner proposal? Oh, it's not a proposal, but what the owners want? No, I haven't. They want eighteen games. Eight. Yeah. As a fan, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> but I can definitely understand a player, you know, who has to. I mean, it takes a big toll on the body with sixteen games as it is. Yeah. A lot of fan, a lot of, a lot of fans were excited about seventeen games. A lot of players were not, mm-hmm. just because of how much extra work and how much extra force and how much extra chance of injury that mm-hmm. it introduces. And now they've got eighteen games on the table. Hmm. As a fan, bring it on. As a player, damn, that's a lot of work. Yep. Like, what if you're like, even if you got paid really well, you know, you go to work every day for eight hours. What if they're like, you know what? Why don't you come in for an extra day? We'll pay you. Are you going to come in? 
Got to pay me a lot. <laughs> 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 more than they w- more than what they would normally pay oh, you, yeah. right? Oh yeah, much more. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> you can kind of understand the mindset that some of these players have when it comes to having to play those extra games. You know. Well, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Um, but yeah, no, that was a that was pretty much recap. We got the Vipers next week. You know, we had a rough game. Hopefully, we can bounce back. Vipers have been putting some points up, so our defense are going to have to be on point. But mm-hmm. I, I don't think we're going to have any issues with that. I'm not too worried about the defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'm worried about our offense. But then again, they did just allow 41 points. Yeah, but we bounced back pretty good last time we lost. So hopefully, we can do yeah. the same. Yep. I mean, yep. it was the home opener after last time, and we were everyone was pumped. Tam's family was in the stands and all that. But hopefully, this time. You know, we'll be able to get one out. We need to show the Vipers what's up. Let them know. Eh, we know you shit standing up. Don't worry. <laughs> and we know how to get around it. <laughs> We're going to bring extra toilet paper this time. Yep, so it's, I, think the, I think the market's all out, man. Oh, yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's it for the show, guys. Uh, once again, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, and Google Play. Um, we've got that new website, stlfanhawks.com. Check us out. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Instagram, on the Facebook page. I do my best to try to share some of the relevant news on there so you can keep up there as well. Also, post some topics, post some points, anything you guys want to talk about, anything you want to ask us, we'll get to it. We want to get that segment up and running here so that we can go ahead and interact with you guys, with the fans, which is the point of the Fan Hawks podcast. So, Thanks for joining us here. You guys have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Remember, the party never stops. Drink all the beers for everyone, and see you next week. Kaka! Kaka! Eddie wanted to get it in the kakas. <laughs>